Hey guys, welcome back to investing in stocks for the long term. Sorry, I've been letting you down. Um, but you know what? I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm back. Helios Towers has been crushed. And I've never even talked to you guys about Helios Towers. I don't even think there's hardly any videos online talking about how to invest in Africa outside of Jumia or, you know, for the everyday investor. And now I got this idea from Sven Lorenz over at undervaluedshares.com, which I highly recommend. No, I don't have a link in my description to get money off of it or anything. Just it's a great service. Sign up for it. But um, anyway, Helios Towers as a way to play the fact that, well, I'll just say in the target, they, they make their cell phone tower company in Africa and they've got 11 markets in those 11 markets. We have 50% mobile penetration, whereas, you know, in the, the West or whatever, we have 90% roughly. So it seems pretty obvious that that is going to go higher. Now, I don't know valuation that deeply on this, but what's odd to me is that Sven, not Sven, Swin, Swin, Lorenz, Swin has abandoned his thesis for now due to the fact that their free cash flow is lower uh, than he expected and things like that. So I just want to go through this 196 page um, presentation a little bit and just see where are we? Is this something you want to invest in? Are they the next American tower or are there some problems that we don't know about? So driving the growth of mobile communications across Africa and East A and East Asia, the Middle East, pretty good mission statement, so to speak, blah, 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 talk a lot about sustainability. Okay. Our mission is to drive the growth of mobile communications across Africa and the Middle East. Our purpose is to deliver exceptional customer service through our business platform and create sustainable value for all our people, environments, customers, communicators, communities, and investors. Okay, so the revenue is up 8% year over year, just EBITDA, just like Charlie Munger, I'm not a big EBITDA fan, but they are free cash flow positive. So 5% uh, operating profit, um, better than, than 2020. So um, then their sites are, are impressive. I mean, they, they have about what they were looking to get in terms of towers in 2025 already to this day. Now, Swin and some other people were concerned. Their margins are lower, but here's the thing. I would think that's because when they acquire new towers, usually they only have one tenant on the tower. And then eventually they get more tenants on each individual tower. And so their profit margin is gonna go up. So I don't see why people are so impatient for that to happen immediately. Um, you know, it, the tenant ratio is down to 1.96 versus 2.3, you know, the last year, but that's, like I said, that's because of the new acquisitions. So, you know, um, let's see, da, 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 power the needs of multiple tenants, as they say, these tenants are pro predominantly blue chip. And I was actually, I should know what that, what that means, but I don't, um, let's see. Yeah, and they talk about how it's lower environmental impact uh, if you have multiple ones on on each multiple tenants on each tower. So, yeah, strong population growth, mo low mobile penetration, multiple tenants, and a tower and power infrastructure gap. Now, I'm not sure what they're talking about in terms of infrastructure. I do know they only have one minute of downtime, as we'll see later per week, whereas in 2015, they had 22 minutes of downtime. Um, and this is considering that they only get, on average, 16 hours of grid time. Um, so I think that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, to me, if this company wasn't a fraud or some just crazy valuation, it seems like a no-brainer stock to hold for that. 
Um, so, you know, um, okay, there's their, the, 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 the sites and the tenants, 140 million people covered by the towers. What we do, acquire and build towers. We only construct towers after contracted anchor order. They place their active equipment into the tower. The anchor tenant owns the active equipment and out Helios Towers owns and maintains the passive infrastructure and power systems. Now, I'm not going to go read you every detail. If you want to go on here, I mean, like I say, this is a 196 page paper. I just want to make you guys aware of the opportunity of Helios Towers. And I want to know, you know, if we've got some smart people down below, what, what am I missing? Because, I mean, I see... I have the rose colored growth goggles on. I see towers in Africa as far as the eye can see. Everybody watching the African version of TikTok, you know, shake into some Sokus or whatever, whatever becomes the meme of the of the moment. Um so I I, I don't know. I don't know what this where the skepticism is. You know, this thing is, I guess, somewhere around its IPO price. Um, I mean, it hasn't crashed too hard. IHS. The other um, international tower stock has also kind of fallen flat, I guess. Just you can blame on Ukraine or something, but that seems kind of, uh, you know, it seems like a cop out. So anyway, there we go with the 51% structural growth opportunity. They're saying 85% U.S. So they got Senegal with a low tenant ratio, Ghana to, to Congo, also rather low. Um Population across Africa and the Middle East is expected to increase by 75% by 2050 to 2.8 billion. Now think about that. So not only do we have low mobile penetration, we've also got fast population growth. It's a double whammy. It's a double whammy, far exceeding across the 10% growth forecast across the rest of the world. Now, hold on. Let's say, well, why don't we just invest in Jumia? Well, hey, you know, first off, Jumia loses a lot of money. And I don't know when they're going to start making money. This company already makes money. You know, if you want to have a little margin of safety, buy something that already makes money, that already has free cash flow. As we continue on, uh, the smartphone adoption is expected to drive an estimated requirement of 25,000 points of service over the next five years in our expected 10 markets. Oh, I thought they had 11. Oh, I'm, I'm getting them mixed up with Jumi. My bad. Disregard the 11 markets. I guess they have seven today. Um, the seven markets, so excuse that. Um, each represents a potential new tenancy for our business, and this organic growth opportunity exceeds the size of our portfolio today. Sole or independent leading Talco. Oh, and yet a lot of their hard currency. Uh, is either dollarized or pegged to the euro. So there's not as much currency risk as you guys might expect. Because And you might say, well, what about, what if the you know there's a coup? What if there's warlords and all that type of stuff? And you know, to that, I would say, I'm sure that could disrupt some things, no question. The fact that it's spread out, you don't have too much risk in any one individual place. And then even if it is, you know, a lot of the bad guys are going to want cell phone towers for, so they can communicate between each other. So, I mean, to me, most everybody, except for perhaps some, uh, you know, ISIS type people or some extremely conservative people are going to be open to um, cell phones and mobile data and all the rest of it. Okay. You know, this is what I like 16 hours grid availability per day, yet delivered 99.9% .9 power uptime. So I guess they can store it with batteries and, and generators and stuff. Um, that's that's interesting. I really don't know how that works. Um, building a high quality asset base, driving cash compounding returns. The long term contracts with diversified blue chips. 15 years. building a substantially larger tower portfolio on which it can lease up and drive cash compounding returns. Yeah. Um, 
you know that it's that feeling I had when I was investing in GameStop of like my downside is 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 low and people don't understand this. You know what I mean? Like obviously this is not going to become a meme stock. That would be pretty weird if it did, but I mean it'd be cool. But but no, I mean, it's nothing like that. It's just it just it seems like a no brainer. It seems like a no brainer. It's it's hated. It's like a hated no brainer. I mean we get that the the obvious. Well, it's Africa. It's risky. Uh, you know. And just like GameStop, well, it's Blockbuster 2.0. So the, you know, the, there's the no-brainer criticism case, but there's also the no-brainer investment case um, in a sense too, where I just feel like, why would you not want to own this stock? Um, it's, it's basically, this stock is innocent until proven guilty, um, the way I'm looking at it. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is this is something I like. Unlike the rest of the world, where the majority of towers have been divested to tower companies, approximately three hundred thousand are still held by you know the MM, the MNOs, the meaning like the operators, like the people who the Verizons, the AT and T's. So there's a huge growth opportunity, not only in terms of population not only in terms of mobile data, but also in terms of who owns the tower. So it's really a triple whammy. Um, so that that's exciting to me. Um, let's see. So you can see they're targeting three tenants. Oh, well, they're how much more return on invested capital they would get uh, with three tenants, quite a bit more from 19 to 32%, and how much more profit they would get, substantially more profit, like triple the profit of even two. So it's, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Okay, CapEx went up a lot, but I assume that's the, that's the acquisitions. You know, you make a bunch of acquisitions, you got to get everything under control. Um, the addition of 2,204 new sites, 507 acquired, 1,697, uh, I mean, I mean six, 507 organic, 1,697 acquired. That's a record, that's a record number. The tower ratio portfolios typically come with a low tenancy ratio, one to 1.4. The organic sites we build have a 1.0 tenancy ratio on day one. The key driver of return is the ability to lease up these assets. I know my voice is sounding annoying right now, but I'm like, why do people not get this? Okay. Our investment in both announced and closed acquisitions as well as financing activity through 2020 and 2021 to support them. And limits and other gains losses resulted in a loss before tax. So yeah, they lost money in the, on the, the acquisitions. I guess they're only talking about the loss and the acquisitions, not the total financials here. Um, okay. So the CEO um, announced his resignment in August, and I think the chief financial officer is taking over here where they talk about sustainability. Um, and they talk about, uh, the new CEO, Tom Greenwood, he was one of the very first employees. He was the CFO in 2015. Um, let's see. He was an exemplary candidate for the CEO role, chief, chief operating officer in 2020. Okay. So it seems like a decent transition at first glance. Okay. Talking about their IPO, talking about the Middle East, talking about their acquisitions. Okay, their revenue is 8% to 4 